Vince and I fought for 22 years. Um, we have different philosophies. But I was never afraid to tell him no. And I was never afraid to, to tell him what I truly thought. I'd always done this character, and I, I went to him one day, and I, I pitched the character. I said, man, this, you know, we, we need this. And I did it for him. He says, God damn, pal. I love it. Find me somebody to do it. I said, oh, it's oh. me. I, I, I want to do it. I want can't do it with that face. And I said, I'm not going to use this face. Instead of religion, I want to talk about love. So we never say religion. Every mm -hmm. time that you would talk about God or something like that, instead of you replace the word God with love. Right. Instead of talking about the Bible, you talk about the book of love. The red face was a rib. The red face, we talk about the deal in the studio where he wanted to see it on camera. Yeah. He told the makeup artist to make his face bright red. Oh. So she put all this red makeup. I didn't know. So then when we watch it back, and I've got red makeup all over me. And I watched it, and I said, oh, my God. I said, that's awesome. Listen, at this WrestleMania, let me just tell you something here. The average age of your celebrity guests, do you want to take a guess? I'll give you the actual age. 61? 58, bitch. What's going on? Bob Goulet, <laughs> come on, we man. The, we don't want the kids anymore. Pat Patterson was, was, was still involved and stuff. Pat would always, we have to do the WrestleMania with the big stars like Steve and Edie and, you know, right. and, and the big and the glamorous. And it was like, Steve and Edie? I shit you not. For e every year, Pat would talk about Steve and Edie. He came in, Vince met him, saw him as a, as a cocky, arrogant guy that thought he was a lot more than, than what he was. So Vince saw this cocky arrogance and, and likened him to a banny rooster. Mm -hmm. the, the cock of the walk, the guy, yes. the, the, you know, the rooster that walks around, screws all the hens and, and, you know, is always cocking and always doing this shit because that's what, you know, Terry did okay. in real life. Okay. So it was like, you're going to be the red rooster. You're okay, going to so be the cock where, of the walk. That's where, that's where we go wrong. Dusty saw himself as a kick-ass baby face. Vince saw Dusty as an entertainer and a fun-loving, every man, everybody could relate to Dusty, and he saw him as that fun-loving entertainer. Vince didn't care for his commentary, no. And Vince felt, it's funny, uh, Linda hired him, and obviously with Vince's blessing, but I think that in the, in the WCW or NWA, whatever the hell they were at the time, era of Tony's commentary and his play-by-play, -play, you don't notice Tony's southern accent I wanted a character that was pure, unadulterated evil. And because I viewed myself as pure as the driven snow. So to counteract that, the yin to my yang was this nasty beast um, that was just, you know, black, pure evil. And I had always been a fan of me, Mark, from when he broke in in Dallas simply because he worked like uh, Don Jardine, uh, the original spoiler. I loved the way they worked and moved in the ring. So I thought, man, this guy would be great. Everybody felt that Randy, if anybody was going to do it, that Randy could kind of tame Warrior in the ring and be able, be able to slow him down. Vince first thought Andre would do it. And Andre did, but only with Andre. You look at the Ultimate Warrior, what can you identify with? Nothing. You, you, look, you, look, you look at Hulk Hogan and he, he speaks to you, he gets you excited, he gets you motivated. And then you look at the Warrior and he's talking about the cosmic moon and stars and uh, this bullshit and that bullshit and astrucity and all this other <laughs> crap that makes no sense. It was what it was, going out and having Warrior get to uh, manhandle you a little bit. Um, he was just so damn clumsy and rough. And where some guys would be like this, he was like, ah! Right. <laughs> you know? Right. Um, it, it, it was, was just his adrenaline, right? He was always on 110, right? So it was, he couldn't I control his body. Savage was always 110, but he never hurt That's you. True. Bad News Brown's mutant? Harlem sewer rats. Yeah. What the fuck? How else are you gonna battle? Okay, if you got a big snake, all right, that eats rats, 
you find mutant ninja rats that eat snakes. What the fuck do you do? Look at you. You should be. Sean Spicer's job is in jeopardy. You're unbelievable. What? You can justify anything. Yes. Yeah. Well, so he's that. pulling possums out of a, out of a bag, right? Showing mutant them. rats. Ted DiBiase buys Sapphire for for God's sakes on television in the modern day. Um, is that bad? Well, I'm going to ask you. Was it ever a consideration that, hey, wait a minute, this looks a lot like the slave trade. <laughs> yeah. But it was purchase. It wasn't a trade. It was an actual purchase. The slave oh, trade. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Kind of bad, I guess, when you look back on it. The audience knows that in the end, the good guy's going to win. So they accept it. And they take an opportunity to get away from real life and then come into an arena and you get to boo the nasty heel and the nasty villain in, in, in their real life in this arena. Mm -hmm. um, nobody thought we were going to war.